Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast. Today, we're looking at Cardinal Wolsey, the butcher's son from Ipswich, who amassed power to rival the king and then had a disastrous fall. If you're new here, very special warm welcome to you. I'm your host, Heather Tesco, and I have been podcasting on Tudor England since 2009. This is the place where I put all my extra episodes from my various shows, as well as loads of extra content. So let's talk about Cardinal Wolsey, shall we? At the height of its glory, the 16th century English court was an epicenter of power, politics, and religious upheaval. Among its illustrious personalities, there emerged one man, Thomas Wolsey, a commoner who ascended to the heights of power only to fall from grace dramatically. Born in Ipswich in Suffolk around 1473, Thomas Wolsey was the son of a butcher and cattle dealer. An unlikely candidate for greatness, his future seemed as ordinary as his beginnings. But Wolsey was far from ordinary. Impressively intelligent, young Thomas caught the eye of local clergy who saw to his education. Wolsey attended Oxford University, where he excelled and earned the nickname the Boy Bachelor for his youthful graduation at the age of 15. Wolsey's rise in the church was nothing short of meteoric. After serving as a parish priest, he soon moved to the more influential circles of the church, demonstrating exceptional administrative skill. His services to the late King Henry VII paved his way into the royal court where he would soon catch the eye of a young and impressionable Henry VIII. Wolsey's sharp intellect and organizational skills made him indispensable. Henry hated dealing with paperwork and the admin side of being a king and government. So he grew to rely on Wolsey and hand all of that stuff off to him so he didn't even have to think about it, which of course increased Wolsey's power enormously. In 1515, Wolsey was appointed the Lord Chancellor of England, the highest official in the kingdom. At the zenith of his power, he held both church and state in his hands. But as Wolsey grew more powerful, he made powerful enemies. The nobility despised this low-born upstart who dared to rise above his station. And the common people hated him for his ostentatious displays of wealth and power. Wolsey lived like a prince rather than a priest. He built the Grand Hampton Court Palace, rivaling the king's residences, and he wore clothes of silk and gold. His lifestyle became a symbol of his greed and arrogance. Yet his fate hinged on one thing he could not control, the production of a male heir. Henry VIII was desperate for a son and had grown disillusioned with his marriage to Catherine of Aragon. The king turned to Wolsey, his most trusted advisor, to secure an annulment from the Pope, thus beginning the infamous Great Matter. Henry VIII's obsession with producing a male heir and his infatuation with Anne Boleyn, a young and charismatic lady-in-waiting, set the stage for Wolsey's downfall. As a cardinal, Wolsey was in a precarious position. He had to tread carefully between the will of an increasingly desperate and volatile king and the papacy's reluctance to annul a royal marriage. He tried his utmost using his extensive diplomatic skills to persuade the Pope, but fate and circumstances would conspire against him. The Pope, under the sway of Emperor Charles V, Catherine of Aragon's nephew, refused the annulment, causing Henry VIII's impatience to turn into rage. The king blamed Wolsey for the failure, and his position became untenable. Anne Boleyn, of course, who had a vested interest in the annulment and was poised to become the next queen, was no friend of Wolsey. She used her influence over Henry to turn him against his once trusted advisor. In 1529, Wolsey was dismissed from his post as Lord Chancellor and forced to retreat from the court. The once all powerful cardinal was stripped of his titles and property, his spectacular fall from grace a shocking reminder of the transience of courtly favor. In November 1530, as he was being escorted to London to face treason charges, Wolsey fell ill and died. His once lavish lifestyle reduced to a lonely end in Leicester. Wolsey's ambitious rise and abrupt fall is a timeless tale of the capricious nature of power. The tale of Cardinal Wolsey, the butcher's son who became the second most powerful man in England, serves as a stark reminder 
No matter how high one might rise, the fall can be swift and merciless. A fascinating character study in ambition, power, and the eventual downfall. Thanks so much for watching. What do you think about Cardinal Wolsey? Should he have tried harder to get a divorce? Or was he made a victim? Let me know in the comments. And hey, if you made it to the end of this video, I hope I earned your subscription to my channel where I put all of my shows as well as lots of extra history nuggets like this one. I'll see you in the next video.